Hey everybody, it's Lou Mangello and welcome to the WW Newscast. Today is Wednesday, July 20th, 2011. I'm coming to you live in Walt Disney World in downtown Disney uh, in the Pueyo Campero store, uh, enjoying some uh, some fresh flavors. Cake and a cup from our friends at Baby Cakes. And of course, this episode is sponsored by our good friends over at touringplans.com. They are the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World. Listen, whether you're a first timer or you've been here a hundred times, it's all about maximizing your time in the parks. What if you could save, get this, up to four hours on your trip to Walt Disney World? Four hours not standing in line in the hot Florida sun. Yes! And you know how you get that? By going to touringplans.com. If you go there, you can find out about crowd calendars, you can find out the, the best parks to visit, wait times, you can download the lines application, fast pass times, all kinds of good stuff like that. Uh, they also have a great blog there as well. Really good stuff. Be sure to go and check them out. Go to touringplans.com slash WDW Radio. And if you do, Henry Work will give you a hug next time you see him in person. So anyway, uh, this week's news is that there's not a lot of news coming out of Walt Disney World per se. The news that's really been coming out from Disney lately is all about the D23 Expo, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. We've heard about the live auction, some of the items that are coming to, to the live auction. Everything from reproductions of Peg-Legged Pete, the audio animatronic parrot from Pirates of the Caribbean. There's a Peter Pan ride vehicle, so to my wife, if you're looking to get me something for Christmas, don't buy the Peter Pan ride vehicle because we have nowhere to put it. Uh, but there's lots of other good stuff. There's also hitchhiking ghosts from the Haunted Mansion, uh, the ones that used to ride along in your vehicle with you. There's a lot of art. There's also experiences, a lot of tours, uh, a special backstage look at World of Color, and lots and lots of good stuff uh, that you can check out over at artofdisney.com. But one of the things that intrigued me a lot about the announcements this week was something that they're calling the Carousel of Projects. And what they're going to do is they're going to give us a sneak peek at some of the concept art and designs and the models, some of the storytelling tools, uh, and the technologies that they're going to use that, that they're currently developing over at Animal Kingdom. <laughs> Not my kid. Uh, or our changes that are coming to Walt Disney World and to <laughs> Disneyland. So some of the things that we're going to see at the expo, you guys are coming there with me. Um, is we're going to see things like props and ride vehicles from Radiator Springs Racers. We got a behind the scenes look at the building of Cars Land, which is coming over to California Adventure. One billion, say it with a B, dollars being spent over at Disney's California Adventure. We are going to be able to meet a classic Disney icon in an entirely new way, in an entirely cryptic message. Vegan Emily, who is that classic icon and how are we going to meet them? Uh, we're also going to find out what's coming to Disney Cruise Line, Adventures by Disney, Disney Vacation Club. Uh, it seems that they may release a little more information, possibly some more concepts and models and plans for Fantasyland. Now remember in 2009, the first expo, they revealed plans, they listened to the community. The community influenced the company. They heard from the, the community about what they liked and didn't like. They've made changes. It'll be interesting to see what else they might roll out. Uh, over at the Expo. We're also going to hear from Parks and Resorts Chairman Tom Staggs uh, in the main arena, the main room, obscure history of the world reference, uh, about some of the other projects currently underway, and of course, in true Disney fashion, a few surprises along the way, air quotes provided by Baby Cakes. Um, we're also going to be able to meet Imagineers who work at the parks and resorts and on the cruise ships. Uh, cast members as well. We're going to find out more about the making of Star Tours. Behind the scenes at Radiator Springs, a look at Buena Vista Street, uh, the new entrance over to California Advent Adventure. Joe Renazario and Bob Zalk are going to talk about Imagining the Dream, the fantasy. is coming out in just a couple of months. Um, and the Parks and Resorts Pavilion is also going to feature Mickey's of Glendale. It's an outlet of Walt Disney Imagining's employee-only store. So for just three days, you can shop for these carousel of projects, souvenirs, and collectibles from Imagineering, which for the most part, guys, you could never get unless you actually went to Walt Disney Imagineering, say, for example, on, on a Backstage Magic Adventures by Disney trip. So uh, Disney is slowly starting to 
trickle out information. Um, again, somebody's asking the box uh, about our live coverage. We, if you're not going to be able to make it out there, we are going to be covering the entire expo live all three days here in the box. You can follow us at d23expolive.com. We'll have a uh, we'll be bringing around the box all three days. We'll also be updating you live on the spot as some of these announcements are being made. But what about you guys? What do you sort of want to see? What do you expect to hear? What would you like to hear at D23? I want to hear a lot. Great. What about you, Mike? What are you looking to... I'm kidding. What would you like to see? <laughs> well, of course, I want to see all the stars that they're going to bring out, all the uh, whatever that's coming out in the studios that we haven't heard about. Also, I just really want to see a lot of surprises, uh, especially with the Parks and Resorts area. Something that we actually have never even heard of even up to date. Right. So. And that's what I'm hoping for, too. You know, last time in 2009, uh, people who were very much in tune to the online communities, we had heard about plans for Fantasyland, rumors of maybe Star Tours coming, and I'm hoping that they've been holding things back right. enough that they can really have that, because they're going to need that, they're going to need that big sort of surprise reveal, and I think we're going to get that. Um, what about you, Mike? What about, what's sort of on your wish list of something that you'd like to see? Is it movie related? Is it merchandise related? Uh, is it theme park related? Is it resort related? Um, I'd like to see a lot of the theme park stuff. Um, I'm really excited about the archive uh, exhibit. Uh, they're expanding it, so I'll get to see that. It'll be great to look at. Um, also, I'd like to see what's going on, possibly, with Hyperion War, if you know it's on hold, but who knows if there's new plans coming out. So. Yeah, I would like to get a better idea of where we are, sort of, um, maybe in the timeline of Fantasyland, when we might start mm -hmm. to see some of these things opening. Uh, possibly a new resort, maybe new DVC properties coming. Uh, where we are on Art of Animation and some of the changes that are, are coming there. Uh, but what about other things? What about stuff like Marvel? You know, Marvel is going to have a presence here, not at Comic Con. Is that something that excites you? And do you think we might get some sort of a big reveal for the first time about Disney's marriage or acquisition of Marvel? Maybe even something for the theme parks? It's certainly possible now that you have a whole bunch of the uh, movies coming out. You know, Captain America is actually coming out this week. You get Thor that already came out, and Iron Man 2, and so we're starting to get more and more of those. So the properties are becoming more and more familiar to the guests, so it's possible they can announce maybe some sort of a presence in the office, perhaps. Now, is that something that you would like to see? Now, we know obviously Universal has sort of, at least from the Mississippi East, right. has sort of a stronghold on attractions coming in. But would you like to maybe see some more of an introduction of Marvel into the box, or is it maybe is it too soon? Well, it might be too soon, but it, it's, if they do it the right way and they put it in the right environment, yeah, Spider-Man with Mickey ears, you're down with that? Maybe, maybe not, not. With Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's funny because people in the chat room are saying they're liking Marvel. Some are more mad. Some are, are no Marvel at all. Uh, Teresa saying maybe more Marvel. Some Marvel over the studios, Marvel Land. At the studios again, because of what they're limited to do attraction wise, it'll be interesting what and how to be able to sort of bring that into the parks. Uh, a Marvel stunt show, meet and greets with the X Men. Um, Marvel in Hollywood Studios is okay, but no Marvel in the parades. So, uh, WRG says separate park maybe. So, um, interesting to see what might come there, especially again since they're not going to be at Comic Con. I think we're going to see things too about expansions in other areas. A lot of people were um, in sort of the video game community, really big buzz about the Microsoft Connect and the Disneyland attraction. I'd love to see some hands-on um, interactive games where we can sort of get the chance to try it out firsthand uh, in a Microsoft booth. And I'm wondering who of the other aspects of the company that haven't been announced yet might be there. Who else might have a presence there? Uh, but I would love to hear from people who are watching online or who are going to watch on YouTube uh, or on the blog what you'd like to see. So if you had a wish list of maybe three things you'd love to have announced over at D23 or what really is getting you excited about D23 as Disney started to release that information, come by the comment section of the blog. I'll post the video there. Uh, please go by and comment. And again, don't forget about our full live coverage. All three days of the Expo will be broadcasting live video and chatting just like we are now in the box over at d23 expo live.com uh, if you can't make it out there you should definitely watch we'll have a lot of surprises for those of you who stay and join and watch us um, in the box if you are going to be out there please come by the ww radio booth in the collectors forum 
Uh, we've got a bigger and better booth. We're partnered up with Mouse Fan Travel again. Lots of surprises uh, for you guys going on there. Freebies, giveaways, maybe even a trip. You never know, Mike Beckerman, not that you can be able to win it. Hugs from Becky. Hugs from Becky. Hugs from, forget Becky, then hugs from me, because I'm, I'm a hugger. So, um, <laughs> So anyway, that is going to do it for this week's, um, albeit late and somewhat noisy newscast. We are coming to you live from Walt Disney World in downtown Disney over at Pollo Campero. Uh, again, don't forget to watch every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern live over at www.newscast.com. If you can't make the live show, check us out over at youtube.com slash Radio or on the WW Radio blog. Uh, be sure to come by the site. There's lots of other goodness going on there as well. There's the blogs, there's the forums, there's the free iPhone app, there's the new WBW Trivia iPhone app, the Frontierland Audio Tour to Walt Disney World, Celebrations Magazine. You can follow me over on Twitter, I am at Lou Mangiello, or join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash WW Radio. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks to Scott, Scott Otis, Hello. and Mike Beckerman, the secret weapon Mrs. Otis. Vegan Emily from Baby Cakes, and thanks to you guys for coming by, taking the time and different every week for watching. Uh, I am Lou Mangello from WW Radio, so until next week, see ya. Thank you.